Hi, this is Craig Stocks for Craig Stocks Arts. I want to go over a fairly advanced technique, I guess, in Photoshop that you can use to correct a common problem that occurs with pictures at sunrise or sunset. And that is a form of, uh, it's not really a chromatic aberration, although it looks a little bit like chromatic aberration. But it's really, I think, a lens flare that occurs when you get details, fine details like uh, trees and branches and leaves that are backlit by the sun at sunrise or sunset. The example of the picture I'm working with here was taken at Joshua Tree National Park and it was taken just a little bit after sunset so the sky was still relatively bright in the background compared to the foreground. And even using a, a, a split neutral density filter there's still quite a bit of difference between the, the brightness in the background and in the foreground. And let me turn off the layer that has the correction so you can see the problem. And I don't know if you can see it in the video at this level, so let me zoom in where these trees are backlit. And you see what happens is that the trees, the, the ends of the leaves, take on a red cast where the, the, if these are tree branches or leaves, they basically just turn red uh, from the bright background colors. We can kind of zoom around and you know, we're zoomed in pretty small here, but you can certainly see the problem. And let's look a little bit at what causes the problem. And let me switch to the channels panel. And if we look first at the red channel, this shows the red, green, and blue channels. If we look at the red channel just by itself, hang on, let me get on a layer that has something on it. Now let's look at the red channel. You can see that the, there's good detail there other than when you get to the tips of those leaves and they just disappear. They just blend into the background, uh, which is why I say this really looks more like a lens flare problem than a chromatic aberration problem. If we look at the green channel, on the other hand, it has all kinds of detail in those leaves. And likewise, if we look at the blue channel, it has even darker details and it starts to lose some of the detail in the middle of the tree, but it does have real crisp details around those leaves. So the solution is some combination of using the detail from the green and possibly the blue channels to fill in some of that missing detail on the red channel. And of course we need to make it the right color so that it all blends together seamlessly. Now, one approach would be to do that very directly using the apply image command and we could apply the green channel to the red channel and then use the history brush to paint in just where we want that that apply image to be applied but that's not a reversible uh, approach that's a destructive approach it actually is changing pixels and if you go too far it can become problematic to try to go back and, and undo something that you've done so let's look at a way to apply that concept, but do it in a non-destructive manner. And let me walk through what we're going to do. Let me get back on the RGB channel here. Here we're looking at the uncorrected image, and I'll turn on the layer where I've already done the corrections. And you can see the corrections that it made. And let me give you just kind of the short version of what I did, and then we'll walk through it. There's really three things happening here. First, there's a layer that is just a black and white layer. And that was created. Let me turn off the masks. That black and white layer was created by applying the green and part of the blue channel to create this black and white detail. I then also created a mask to pick up just the, the details in the foreground. Next, I applied a, a solid color adjustment to turn those details green rather than, than gray. Let me turn this mask off so that we have kind of a green or, or really cyan would be the uh, more accurate uh, foreground color to mix in with the red. And of course, cyan is the opposite of red, so that counteracts the red fringe. So the end result, when all this is put together with the layer mask, hiding the group is that it corrects the issues here without affecting the whole image. So let's just quickly walk through that. Let me collapse the layer that has the corrections and turn it off and we'll start from scratch. 
and I'm, I'm zoomed in pretty close here so you can really see the problem. We're actually zoomed in to 287 percent, so working pretty close. Uh, first we want to create a blank layer. Then we'll use the apply image command which is under image apply image and this is kind of a super duper copy and paste command that does everything all at one and what we want to do is our source is going to be our background layer and we actually want just the green channel and you can it gives you a preview and you can see exactly what we're going to get and applying it at 100 percent opacity in multiply blending mode will work fine so really all we need to do at this point is check the background and apply the green channel and click OK. And if we want to get a little bit of the blue channel in here as well, we can go a second time, apply image, and this time select the blue channel. But let's back off the opacity a little bit. Maybe something in the range of 30%, something like that, and we'll just apply that. So now we have our black and white image but we really only want it around the black edges. We don't want to pick up the lighter colored sky. Now we can use apply image again to create a mask that will accomplish that for us. So let's add a layer mask and when I choose apply image a third time I'm now applying an image to the mask and you can see in the thumbnail a little bit of a preview of what we're going to get and again we'll choose from the background layer and let's apply the green channel and let's invert it so that the sky is black and the dark details of the trees in the foreground are light colored and we'll apply that so now we have masked that black and white adjustment out from the backgrounds and if I alt click on just the mask you can see the kind of mask that we're getting and if we wanted to we could go to image adjustments and run levels or curves on the mask itself if we felt like we wanted to darken the background a little bit more to to enhance those details and maybe lighten the, the whites a little bit to make that mask even more precise and then the last thing we want to do is turn this whole thing kind of a cyan color so that we're offsetting the, the red colors that are fringing through here. Now let me turn that on. You can see the red that we're trying to counteract and of course the opposite of red is cyan. So let's add a solid color layer and let's choose a kind of a greenish cyan color and we can go fairly intense with this and just click OK and the last thing we want to do second to the last actually is create a clipping mask to clip that color into the, the black and white layer and we can see that that's going to be too strong even out here in the edges so let's back off the opacity until we get something that looks like just paying attention to these edges that looks like it's going to be about the right color to offset the red. Now let's select both layers and from the flyout menu we can choose new group from layers and we'll just label this corrections and add a mask and I can do a control I to invert that mask to hide everything. So now we're ready to actually paint in the adjustments. We have added our black and white version that has the detail. We've created a detailed mask that will reveal that adjustment mostly in the, uh, the dark foreground areas and mask it out of the sky. We've changed everything to cyan and so we can now choose a brush and somewhere around 50% opacity is probably okay to start with. We'll hit, tap the X key to swap white to the foreground and now if I just paint with white on that group mask and I'm going over it a couple times you can see that we are painting away the red and painting in 
that green cyan color and I'm not being particularly careful I'm just kind of following the edges here some of this might be actually a little bit of, of chromatic aberration but it's not affecting the sky because of the mask that we added to that layer it's only affecting the details around the trees and as we paint over it and I'm painting still at about 50 percent opacity away goes the green or away goes the red and in comes the green we get a there's a few areas along the hill that we lower my opacity a little bit that we might want to correct and we just continue working our way around anywhere where we see that that flare happening around the the branches or the leaves depending on what kind of trees you have in the foreground we can just paint that away so rather than boring you with the rest of the process it's just a continuation of what I'm doing here and when you're done that red glow goes away and we've restored the detail to the foreground and made it a, a much more finished image there's the after and there's the before so I hope you find this useful if you have any questions uh, feel free to drop me an email and you can also check out my website for other tutorials at craigstocksarts.com thanks and have a great day